uh, had some major miracles that happened. Just God showed up. Um, uh, we were in Germany. No, we, uh, we was in Germany the last night. And I, I'll, tomorrow, I'll just I'll go in depth on it on the podcast. Uh, if you're not if you're not connected yet, please listen to Hannah there and do that. And as you see, says repent and get your life right on that. So make sure you're there. All right. And uh, w- but I was there, and I just could feel the weariness of many people in this walk that we're in, the, the battle that we're in. Um, you, you think it's bad here. Some of the European countries have had it much worse than we have as far as the government lockdowns and all the, the – the Im- you, know, you cannot homeschool in Germany. You understand that? You can't even homeschool there. It's illegal. Uh, matter of fact, a couple of years ago we were helping with the ADF uh, groups I was working with on a family that was put in jail for homeschooling their kids. They put the dad in jail for six months, bring him out, and put the mom in jail after that uh, just for homeschooling their children. And this is the kind of uh, oppression that they have. And so we're fighting for them. And so I could feel the weariness in the room. We were in a a little place right outside Stuttgart ministering with our friends there. And right in the middle, I was about to pray for this woman I did not know. I looked at her over the side, and I I saw something in the spirit. And I, I started talking, and then all of a sudden behind me, uh, some, I, I, and something hit me in the back. I mean, it hit my back leg, and I thought somebody was back there, and I turned around, and there, there it was. It was an angel. And uh, I, I was like, what, what's going on? Because I lose it when that happens in a meeting because I'm trying to concentrate, and I forget there's a crowd there, and I talk on the microphone, don't even know it. But anyway, I said, what are you here for? And they said this, this angel said this to me. He said, I'm here to give strength to the weary legs of my people in this hour, the Lord's people in this hour. And those who are weary in their walk and have become dull in their spirit, I am here to break that. And also to heal legs that need healing that are becoming weary. How, many, how about that, that mean, minister to anybody here? So I just said, okay. And, and then he began to speak to me more, and I didn't even know where I was. I literally did not know I was in a meeting. This thing had just taken me away uh, in the spirit realm. And so I finally popped out of it a little bit. I knew the lady I prayed for. That was a key. The Lord so showed me that she was a trigger for this angel showing up. I did not know her. But anyway, I asked the audience, how many are weary in your walk? I mean, physically and weary and you just that dullness of spirit. Please stand up. And I thought maybe, you know, a little bit, a few people, over two-thirds of the audience stood up. And we had a packed crowd. It was just packed in this building. By the way, it was 96 degrees and no air conditioning. Honda da babashe. All right. So, uh, so, you know, it's a little warmer in here than normal. Please do not complain. I promise you it was hot. And they came and they packed out the room. Uh, they don't have air conditions. Really, there's no, nobody has air conditions because they don't get that hot. And so I brought it to them, let them know what we go through. But um, I, as, I, as I did this, we just began to release it. And I've already gotten testimonies of people being touched by the Lord in the midst of that, that God strengthened them in that hour. So after the meeting, I asked, who's that lady I was praying for? Oh, they said, no, she's a Russian Jew. She came to Germany to bring dance to this nation. And she was releasing dance in the land. And so I knew that, that what do you do in, in dancing? Uh, you know, Camilla can tell you it's mainly your legs. And you get weary sometimes. You have to have strength in your legs. And so I, I knew what she represented triggered this thing. So I feel like it's, this is a new partner. It seems like every time I go, I meet a new angel. So uh, y'all need to send me out more often and I can bring him back, all right? Uh, and uh, I know I'd rather be here, but I just want to release that today. Can I do that for you? If you're weary in your walk and the dullness of spirit, John, come here and speak to the dullness of spirit. This is, we dealt with this a, few, a month ago or so. Explain what a dullness of spirit is because this thing can get on you and you don't even know what it is. But I think God wants to break it today. I think one of the things that, uh, when you're talking about a dull spirit it means that your intellect and your experiences overcome your knowledge of God where the presence no longer, you don't recognize it anymore. And it's something where, um, you know, we, we teach this in the prophetic class on level one, you know, it can thunder and you don't realize it's the voice of the Father saying something. And you, and you just, you go about your day and you think everything is natural. You think, well, that's just, this just happened to me. This just happened to me. This just happened to me. And you're not aware that there's a spirit realm behind you, that there's another dimension at play um, in your in your daily walk. And, um, you know, if you've been with us here on Wednesday night, I was I I text him that, you know, we had a uh, we had an angel that showed up 
one, one Wednesday that was an angel of refreshing. I had three angels show up at my house um, th that same um, thing in my, you know, in my house. They were, there's three of them, and they're, sh these, like, they're like this tall. And I said, Lord, what are these things here? And they said, these are angels of refreshing. I know this is on the heart of the Lord right now because there is something that the Lord, it, like to me, it's like when Jonathan um, um, tasted honey in the middle of the battle. It says his eyes brightened. And, and the thing is, is that the Lord wants to get rid of that thing that says you can't eat while the battle's going. You can't eat. You know, if you remember Saul, he gave this order. He goes, nobody's going to eat until we win this battle, right? That's being mission-driven but without with ignoring self-care to the point where you're not even an effective fighter, okay? And there's, there's some where, you know, you can get this. It's a self-sufficiency thing where you're so concerned about accuracy, you're so concerned about how everything, you, you forget that he's the one that holds it all, right? Like in Revelation, we, we talked about that a couple Wednesdays ago. When, when it talks about leaving your first love, there's a commitment to accuracy that overcomes the love part of the message. And, and, and we, we're, listen, it's not, it's just kind of a, this isn't a, we're just at a moment in time right now. This is not a real long time for refreshment. And, and, I, and I say that with a warning because, you know, a couple weeks ago we were talking about if you don't have strength now, how are you going to run with a horseman? This is going to be a thing where, you know, I'm telling you, I just have a fear of the Lord on me when I say you got to just take a pause and get refreshed on this thing because if you don't, you will just fall when it comes to when the, the stuff has. And what that means is you will, you will compromise part of your destiny Listen to me. You'll compromise part of your destiny. You'll have an opportunity to go into promises that God wants for you, and you'll go, no, I don't think so. And the Lord will say, okay, you're going to go in the wilderness for a little longer. And, and, and you will not be able to go back to the same opportunities. You won't be able to. It'll be over. You'll have to, you have to go learn that. And, it, you know, and, and whether you get out of that cycle is you know, up to the Lord. I can't say that for sure. But I'm just saying we're in a moment right now where our choices really, really matter. And, uh, you know, there's, there's lots of times where you can make a choice. It's really not that big of a deal. I mean, you got grace. Uh, you know, we use this illustration all the time. If you're driving a car really slow and you jerk the wheel, it, you, you, you know, you can move pretty easily. And it's not going to harm you that, fat, that bad when, when the car is going slow. But it, we're getting, it's starting to get faster. You can't jerk the wheel when you're going 70. You can do it when you go 30. Right? But I'm just saying that I really feel like the Lord, he's, he's calling us where we're going to start, it's going to start driving faster. You're not going to be able to just jerk the wheel. If you don't, you're going to flip over and flip out. And uh, I, don't, I don't want that to, to happen. There is, uh, it, you know, it says be sober of spirit. Right? That's one of the things it says in the scripture. And that means that there is a, uh, there's just a, I, there's a, just saying, Lord, created me a clean heart, right? And, and if, you, if you pray those prayers, created me a clean heart, oh God, take my life, you can do what you want with it. it that eliminates 90% of the confusion, honestly. And that dullness, when you say, Lord, you can take my life, you can do whatever you want to do with it, it the Lord goes, I can use that. I can, I can mold that into what uh, I need to be. So I say that to say... Um, don't be surprised when things start to get a little bit prickly where you, your experience is going to have and your intellect will have to bow to the presence of God. It, 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 you, we're going into situations where we're, it's, you know, just like, uh, like Samuel, you know, didn't see who was the real king because he was looking in the natural uh, the ways God had done it before. He looked at all of them. He, you know, the first king that got picked was head and shoulders above everybody else. And Samuel sits there and goes, he sees the first guy and he goes, well, this guy looks similar. It's not going to look similar. It's going to look like God says, I, I'm looking at hearts right now and I'm going to take people that have just been out in the field that have been faithful and serving and I'm going to say things over them that, that is going to, you know, because I'm looking at the heart right now. I'm looking at the heart and so, I, you know, we, there's probably a lot much to say, but I just, I want to say we're in a moment of time. It is not long, and 
uh, I hope there's an urgency in your spirit just to get as close to the Lord as possible because we cannot be dull in this hour. We cannot allow voices to make us dull. And, and what that means is you have to invest enough. You have to invest the same amount of time that you do listening to anything else. I don't care if it's ministry podcasts, news, everything. You have to invest the same amount of time in just one-on-one -on -one worship with Jesus where you get a thing where he's, his confidence is in you. And, and you know, you won't, you know, uh, Rick Joyner says this all the time. There's a scripture that says, woe in that season where those who have babes who are nursing. And he says this, he goes, what if in the last days, he goes, it's a challenge to us to not be nursing baby Christians. We have our own relationship with the Lord. I don't have to constantly be fed by somebody else to get nourishment. I know how to get food for myself. And that's, that's where it is. There's some of us right now, there's an idolatry with information where we just listen to it over and over and over again. And the scripture says this, the writing of books is many and the reading of many books is wearisome to the soul. I think if we, we can change that today, that the reading of websites is many and the reading of many websites is wearisome to the soul. And there's a point where you, you will not get any more information that's going to make your life better. You have to have heaven interpreting the information that you receive. That's revelation. That's, that's, it's heaven interpreting the revelation, the, 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 the information that you have. And you don't want to have this unbalance of more information and a low presence and low information. Right? I mean, low revelation. And what revelation is, it's understanding the emotion that God wants to release in the moment. That is the heart of God. That, that is what the Lord is, is pushing us into right now where we are not just going to say the phrase, the heart of God, over and over again. We're going, because when you say the heart, we're talking about the emotions of God. We're going to understand the emotions and the tone that is behind what the Lord has. And that's a broad range. He can, be, he can tell us to be happy in the midst of a storm. He can tell us to be angry about something that seems like it's good. Okay, so that's just, just where we're going. It's a, it's, a, it's a plumb line right now that the Lord wants to build uh, for us in, in, in ratio. And I, I guarantee you, if you're not being challenged by the Lord right now to submit your experience and submit your intellect to the presence of God, just check yourself. Check yourself. I, and I'm not telling you anything I'm not, I'm not personally experiencing where the Lord goes, hey. And I'm like, well, you know, I don't really think like that. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. You really do because this, again, and we said a couple weeks ago, the Lord is eliminating this thing in us that thinks we have loopholes with him. He does not. Uh, say that, say this on Wednesday, the Lord has no loopholes. They, he catches the craftiness in their craftiness. That's what it says. The, the, the legalism that works with people sometimes, where we can get off on a technicality, well, you, you know, where we can work a system, that, that doesn't exist with God. It doesn't. And, and that, having that in our spirits lets us know, like, hey, I want to get close to that because that's real truth, you know? Because it, it, it's one of the things that... that you know, we because we live in such a society that we consume information all the time, we think information is just it's just information, it's one person's opinion, and we don't understand that in the midst of all the voices, God has a desire for truth. God has a desire for truth. It's a carnal mind that just says, Well, you know, you have your way and this person has this way and this person has that way. There's no real truth. I talked to a I'm, when I was coming back from vacation recently, I talked to a guy on a plane for three and a half hours and interpreted his dream and he uh he's an owner of a bar here in mississippi we talked for an hour and a half or whatever uh, about just different parts in his life and and then we started talking about spiritual matters and he's, he's, something just flicked you know and the and the thing that you know he he took is something that was positive he goes well you know there is really isn't all there really isn't a, you know you can have that interpretation of this dream and even though i'm, I'm telling you it's a spirit I mean, he, he started saying this thing, you know, before he, he, when he was really receptive to what I was saying about his dream, all of a sudden, um, when we're two hours into our conversation, I tell him I'm a pastor, all of a sudden he switches. 
and he literally starts, you know, twitching a little bit there in the in the airport. And, you know, normally, I, I'll just be honest, I don't really even introduce myself, honestly, as a pastor, really, when I'm on a flight, just because I know that that happens a lot. People, you know, they get tight, right? They're like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> and the guy, that, anyway, it's a, it's a spirit, and he said this, and I said, I said, well, you know what? I said, and this is a respectful conversation. I said, I said, that's where you and I disagree. I said, I believe that truth can be known. I said, I believe that, that God has something in our heart that knows truth. You know, and I told him, I said, listen, I've been to Southeast Asia, and I just told him some of the things that are culturally okay there. It's culturally okay there to sell or make profit off one of your kids with prostitution in Southeast Asia. It's perfectly culturally acceptable. And I said, do you think that that's wrong? He thought, well, yeah. <laughs> Why? I said, they, that's perfectly fine to them. It's perfectly fine. There's nothing, nobody bats an eyelash about that. They just say, hey, that's okay. I said, you know that because there's a truth that calls to you that's on the inside. I said, and that's, that's where we're at right now. There's a truth that's calling us to, you know, the world, God wants them to know that he loves them and he wants them to come into a relationship with eternity. And, and it's, a, it's a higher thing for us to know the Lord because he's talking to us about stewardship. And he doesn't want us to be dull about what we're called to steward. Right? And some of us, he wants to tell us, hey, you're, you know, you, you don't have to worry about stewarding that. <laughs> Go with this right here. That's where I'm giving you that. So anyway, I'm, I'm telling you yakking, but that's what. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> well, that's pretty good yakking. That's anointed yakking. The dullness of spirit. 